Hi, I'm Pablo Spechalski and today, thanks to Andrew Newton, by the way, if you do not know who Andrew Newton is, the link to his channel is in the description, so please check it out, but I'm pretty sure that you already know who Andrew is. I have an opportunity to have a fully impartial, because the thing is not sponsored by anyone besides the Andrew Newton, we can take a look at the fourth contender in the 2020 long range 2.4 gigahertz radio module competition shootout thingy because today today i have the ce ce or however i'm gonna call this thing is the ce you see here it's a ce fm30 transmitter and the fr mini receiver 2.4 lora wrong range and they say it's good up to 30 kilometers so it has to be true Radio module. Okay, we have some cables. We will not be looking at the cables. And what we're gonna do today is we're gonna take a look how this thing is built, what's inside, and then probably in the next video I will even connect this to my long range testing and do the standardized walking around my the place where I live. So let's begin. The plan for today's video is first let's take a look at the receiver uh, F. Air Mini, and as you can see, this is the diversity or actually antenna diversity receiver. Uh, because let's focus, okay, focus, okay, because there is only one chipset and they bother to scratch off the markings. Uh, I have really no idea why everybody scratches off the markings when the only radio chipset on the market that allows you to pull this kind of stuff when the 2.4 gigahertz range is the Semtech SX1280 or 81, but they differ only very slightly and are actually hardware compatible with each other. And we have this chipset over here, which probably is some kind of the switcher or power amplifier. Bear in mind, we really have no idea of knowing uh, uh, how this is really connected and what's the real output power on the telemetry because the power amplifier or the switcher, okay, the power amplifier matters only for the telemetry downlink uh, because it will just bump, bump, bump up the power output from the Semtech SX1280 to get the longer telemetry range. But about the details, we unfortunately do not know much. What we know is that the both antennas are actually connected to this chipset. Personally, I would put rather only the switcher, not really, and maybe some kind of the comparator, not really the power amplifier on the receiver, because the telemetry in this case is only a secondary case, and it's more important to have a good diversity than to have a high telemetry range. And on the receiver, what we have? We have three ports, which is out voltage and ground and probably there is not really much besides the serial port we have the tx3 and rx3 so probably you can even connect something to this thing i know that it supports the transparent serial and you can use this thing to have for example a mavlink uh, over transparent serial so it, it's kind of kind of nice feature so i bet it would be have to be connected to this pads i would have to consult it other people to be 100% sure because I just got it and I just wanted to show this to you because this is so amazing, right? And on the other hand, we have the STM32 F375. Uh, so if you really want to, you can probably build a flight controller on this thing and some additional pads, but this is pads over here are only for programming and we will not be looking at it. Overall, the build quality of the receiver, um, I'm not impressed, uh, but it's also not bad. I would not mind some kind of the glue applied to the antennas over here, so the antennas are slightly more tightly connected to the board, but besides that, the quality looks good, it does not look too cheap, and uh, it was built probably in the 30s second week of the 2020. So this is the receiver part. The transmitter. Transmitter and the antenna, of course, we have the SMA. And uh, 
the plastic has this nice satin finish. I think this is uh, this plastic covered with this rubbery thingy layer, which almost always uh, gets off after a year or so of usage and then it's sticky. So I, I do not like this this kind of rubberized plastic because then it just looks amazing. We have the mini USB. Ah, who the hell still uses mini USB in the 2020 to connect to everything, anything? And we have this bind button, okay, okay. And we have the switch, this encoder thingy, which by the way, I cannot. Ah, and we have this encoder thingy. Oh. Cholera, yes. no. uh, th this is really tough and this apparently is used okay let me let me make move this closer to you this apparently allows you to you to use the mode it's either transparent serial or the ppm or the s bus output i don't know how to mix the s bus with the serial uh, but this is probably that we will be able to figure out later when I will start using this thing. For now, let's just open the box and see what's inside. Inside there is, well, quite a lot of things. Let me begin with disconnecting the SMA connector because uh, then it would be kind of hard to show you everything that's inside. I wish I had my LCD microscope so we could take a closer look at the electronics but still how this thing is uh, connected to the okay i still have to remove two screws okay okay so now okay so we have the electronics and the main board of the ce fm30 the quality of the build looks I do have to say quite well. The PCB looks nice. Maybe the the, the 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 cut marks over here are not perfect, but still it works nice. On the receiver we have the what's that? That's of course STM32. Yes, STM32 F103. Um, the same as goes on your NASI. If you are still using NASI, probably not, but still, uh, that's always an option. We have the connector for the internal bay of the OpenTX Radius JA burst JA bay standard, and on this side we have what? We have this additional board that is soldered. Ah, this is soldered. Well, too bad. Looks like this board is doing the Bluetooth part because this thing has the serial uh, output via the Bluetooth so you can connect to any application that talks Mavlink and get the Mavlink telemetry to your smartphone or laptop or whatever you are using. However, this thing is soldered and we rather will not be able to remove that. Uh, but it looks like it's some kind of the standard HC01. This is HC01 Bluetooth module. And below that we have one more time something that looks awfully similar to the receiver. Uh, look at the differences. This one extra board over here. Very similar in build to the receiver board. We have this chipset with removed markings that in this case rather is not working as the camera switcher because well the antenna switcher because there is only one antenna and that kind of makes me think that this small chip over here is not really only a switcher but also the power amplifier that's interesting um that's interesting and that also means that the power amplifier is not cooled uh, at all so uh, if this thing will be in the max power output mode and something goes wrong with the antenna it might try to overheat itself but besides that the big board is only the the small uh, STM32 that probably is only handling the communication between the uh, OpenTX and this this piggy piggy board piggy bank piggy piggy yeah this this smaller board over here that is doing the radio itself. There is no shielding of any kind, so that doesn't look good. And what's also interesting, there is over here a second. Okay, you lost the focus. Okay. 
over here we have the second EPEX connector. So at least the hardware allows you to connect a second antenna. No bloody idea what. My idea is that this is probably, if we look at the receiver, this antenna output is connected via this EPEX connector to the main antenna, while the power amplifier slash antenna switcher just terminates the output of this one on the transmitter. But um, this is probably the most uh, probable case of what's really happening. The USB means that probably we can update the firmware and the switch over here is actually not only a switch, it's the encoder and it has 16 positions. Yeah, we have a 16 positions. I wonder why they used something like that instead of the, of the switch. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, focus again. So, interesting choice. Um, I'm not sure if this is better, this, this encoder 16 position switch or some of the smaller switches. Really hard to tell what's inside. But inside, besides all of that, the hardware looks legit. Um, it's cheap because clearly this is not the highest quality hardware ever built and the lack of actually lack of the rf shielding of any kind is kind of problematic oh by the way if you are worried that the bluetooth will interfere with the transmissions because both bluetooth and this radio is on 2.4 gigahertz then worry not this is not something that's happening because this thing is using lora and lora it's not affected by the FSK modulation. So even if there is a low power Bluetooth transmitter over here, the fact that this is our LoRa kind of does not really interfere with each other because those are completely different kinds of the modulation and it should be fine. And I think we will end this video over here because I don't think there is much else to, much else to show you. I have not connected this yet to anything, but we'll do it. And in the next video, we will probably do the standardized walking to check how this thing works. I'm, however, slightly optimistic about the range possibilities because for me, I think my suspicion is that this thing was built with the range in mind. That means that the configuration on the LoRa modem is set for the higher range and the higher sensitivity and the higher uh, error correction than the low latency. So probably this is not really fast and I doubt it can go faster than 50 Hertz and probably even that is quite a lot, uh, but instead it's very sensitive on the receiver and can do kilometers and kilometers and kilometers of the range but we will find out about this later so for now it's all for today thank you very much for watching and until the next one bye bye